Hey guys, I'm gonna do a quick powerlifting basics video. Um, it's not going to cover everything you need to know because you learn a lot when you actually compete. But for somebody who has never actually stepped foot on stage, this will kind of give you a basic rough guideline and set up your expectations for when you are going into the meet. First time signing up for a competition, you've picked your federation, you've picked your division, your weight class, and um, maybe a subdivision like masters or juniors, so you have that settled. You're going to want to read the rules of your federation. So each federation has pretty much the same general rules, but yours is going to have more specific guidelines like head movement, feet placement for bench press, things like that. So you want to get really familiar with the rules and with the commands. Commands are really important. That's something that almost every first time power lifter messes up on even when they study you just as a reflex tend to miss your commands unless you've been training with commands so try to have somebody there who is going to help you out with your commands so for your squat you're gonna to have to wait for the squat command and then for the rack command don't rack it too early That's for bench you're gonna have a start press command when you're at the bottom position and then a rack command at the top. I've actually seen videos where some federations don't have the start command so it kind of varies I guess but for the ones that I'm familiar with we have the start and the press and rack command so make sure not to skip your signals and for the deadlift you have your down command. Next thing is gear. Make sure you have the right gear so you're gonna need a singlet, you're gonna need um, a t-shirt that doesn't hold anything in. You're going to need knee-high socks, so a sock that covers your calves. You're going to need appropriate shoes. So you're going to have to read your Federation's rules and get familiar with what kind of gear they allow, what kind of wrist wraps they allow, what kind of knee sleeves that they allow. Make sure that you have all the right equipment and make sure you have the right belt if you're going to use a belt. Like I said, read the rules cover to cover, make sure you know them by heart and make sure you practice them. Going into my first meet, I didn't know the way the actual meet day was set up. So we had 24 hour weigh-ins where I had to get in there the day before, weigh in, I had the whole day to recover, or eat or do whatever. And then the next day I got in an hour early, it started at 9 a.m. We got in at 8 a.m., we did our warm-ups, and then you have to wait for your flight. So the way the flights work is that you are in a flight with about 9 or 10 other people in your weight class if there's enough people to fill it up, and it goes by flight. So flight A goes three times, does their full attempts, and then flight B goes, etc. And then once everyone's done with the squat, then they move on to the bench portion, and then they move on to the deadlifts. When I first started out, I was like, so do I squat, bench, and deadlift, and then I squat, bench, deadlift again, and then I do it again? They're like, no. You squat first, everybody finishes squatting, you bench, everyone finishes benching, and then you do your deadlift. People think that after weigh-ins it should be a free-for-all when it comes to food and what I recommend is that you eat things that you normally eat. So don't try to overeat and come in a lot heavier than you usually train at. Try to stay at the weight that you usually train at because that's where your body's going to be more comfortable. You don't want to overeat. You also don't want to undereat, but you don't want to get too bloated because then your belt's not going to fit right, your singlet's not going to fit right, even your shoes and your socks might not fit right because you're going to be bloated and your leverages are going to change and it's going to mess you up. And on the day of your meet, try not to take in too much pre-workout if you're not used to training with a pre-workout. Especially if you've taken a deload week and you haven't been training that week and you haven't been taking any pre-workout that week, your tolerance for pre-workout is going to decrease even in those few days. So when you come in and you're ready to go and you take a ton of pre-workout before your squats and then you feel sick, that's something you want to avoid. That's a mistake that I made, taking in tons of pre-workout right before my squat, feeling nervous, feeling nauseous and then completely not getting my squats because of that. So try to stay calm and collected and focused, especially for your first attempt squat. You're gonna be nervous and you're gonna potentially screw up if you take in too many things that you're not used to putting in your body. For your first meet, 
don't do a weight cut just walk on at whatever we are at even if it's a couple pounds higher than the next weight class down like i said your weight class doesn't really matter don't try to force yourself down into a weight class that you're not comfortable training at because it's just going to give you a bad time the worst part of participating in a powerlifting competition is the weight cut beforehand it makes you absolutely miserable so don't do that to yourself just make it fun and have somebody there who can help you out, who can calm you down if you're a little bit nervous, who you could talk to about your attempt selection, which is very important, who you can have, you know, hold your wraps for you or hold your belt for you or hold your water, take pictures for you. It's always nice to have a supporting team. Usually after your first powerlifting competition, you'll meet enough people to where you can have other people helping you out. But for your first time, have maybe two or three people there. So one person can hold your gear for you, one person can help you with your attempt selection, one person can take your pictures and videos because it's always nice to see your attempts and to see what you did wrong and to be able to analyze for next time. Anytime you get a red light, turn to your judge and say, hey, what did I do wrong? Why did I get a red light? How can I improve? Every single time, you need the constructive criticism. And it doesn't matter if you think that you should have gotten the lift. It doesn't matter if your friends think you should have gotten the lift. If the judge doesn't give you the lift, you did not get the lift. So don't be mad. Just make improvements for next time. Me personally, I've gotten red lighted for depth so many times that I told myself I will squat so deep from now on that there is no way that a judge will ever red light me for depth. And I know coming into this next competition, I will be so ashamed and so embarrassed if I get red lighted for depth because I've trained in a way that would make it impossible for me not to hit it. I've learned w how deep to drop, when to bounce out of the hole, and I've applied everything from the last three competitions that I've had so that I won't make the same mistakes. And what it comes down to is you're getting judged by these three people. These, this panel of judges and what they see is what you're getting judged on so if they can't tell if your depth is low enough or not if it's breaking parallel or not and they don't give it to you that's not their fault you need to make it very obvious for them and you need to make it unquestionable last tip is just have fun and learn and use your first meet as the grounds for how much you're going to improve in your second and your third and your fourth. It's really important to have somebody who you trust, who you, whose programming you believe in, who you can have help you with your training, with your nutrition, and with your attempt selection. Because it doesn't matter how you train or how you diet. If your attempt selection is terrible, if you think you're going to get numbers that you have no chance of getting, you're done for. I've messed up my meets because of attempt selection and I've seen a lot of other people mess up their meets for, because of their attempt selection. And remember to take a lot of snacks with you to the meet and to just stay off your feet throughout the time you're at the meet because sometimes meets are long, they're like 10 hours or even more and if you're standing around all day you can tire yourself out. So above all else, have fun of course and Take lots of pictures, meet, meet lots of people, be nice, and be a team player, help people out, cheer people on, and people are going to help you out too. All in all, I'm super excited about Pendleton in the next three weeks. I've been training hard for it, and I hope I do as good as I'd like. My goal is to go 9 for 9 to hit some PRs and have fun. Most of all. Alright, bye guys.